Hey, hello, how do you do? Shay Durags here, and welcome to Episode Rundown, where I, Shay Durags, review a show episode by episode and give you guys my feels on it. We're doing the Miraculous, mirac I want to say Miraculous Ladybug, I'm pretty sure it's Miraculous Tales of Ladybug and Cat Noir. That is a mouthful, I don't know why they didn't just call it Miraculous Ladybug. Um, and I'm going to be doing Episode 1, The Bubbler. That name alone sounds really, really stupid. <laughs> You're talking to somebody who kind of likes the stupidness of things like that. Anyway, quick recap for those who don't remember. This episode is about, uh, it's the first series opener. I believe it's a series opener. Uh, for one, uh, it, it says season one, episode one. But from what I saw, it was really hard to tell that it was a series opener. So you've got Ladybug. And Cat Noir. I don't know the characters' names yet. I'm pretty good with names, but it does take me a couple episodes to get them down. So give me a couple episodes before you get on my case. Um, but you have Ladybug and Cat Noir, and they're dealing with this villain called the Bubbler, who is capturing adults, and the Bubbler is uh, Cat Noir's best friend. And the only reason he's capturing adults is because he tried to throw Cat Noir a birthday party, and his dad was very stubborn. This is supposed to be, like I said, this is the introductory episode, but it doesn't feel like one. It kind of feels like I fell into the show, but at the same time, I can see how they tried to make it an introductory episode. Because you can do an introductory episode with superheroes. I'm saying introductory episode, that's such a mouthful. You can do a season, a series opener with a superhero episode, a superhero show, two ways. You can either do the origin story way. Or you can do the immediate rest way, where you just show the superhero doing their thing, because people are so sick and tired of origin seasons or origin these days, and it's actually pretty hard to do an origin story and keep the the and keep the uh, audience interested. And um, the thing here is, I don't find this a particularly strong opener. Um, like, I, a lot of times I felt confused as to what was going on. Even though it is a fairly simple show, I felt kind of confused as to what's going on. For example, um, eventually we find out that the girl turns into Ladybug uh, and the boy turns into Cat Noir. And I'm like, what exactly are their powers? Because they haven't really defined what their powers are. Especially the the ladybug, like it seems both of them have the power of to be super super acrobatic and a little bit of super strength, um, which makes sense to the cat, because if you give cat powers to a human, you know cats have stronger legs than humans and they're acrobatic. That's just natural. But why is this ladybug girl like super acrobatic? It doesn't really make sense to me. And both of them do pull off their like supposedly special move. Um, you know, Ladybug does it twice. She has this lucky item that she brings out of nowhere. And Cat Noir has this cat power. I don't know what he did, but they were inside a, a supposedly invulnerable bubble, and he just made it pop. Um, I guess it's like a super wave of power or something like that. I don't know. Um, Ladybug's lucky power thing, where she just she pulls she pulls an item out of thin air, and it's the exact item she needs to help her. And then she looks around and figures out how it will help her. I don't know if that's supposed to be part of her power or if that's just her, that's just a representation showing how she's figuring it out. But it feels like a really big writer's convenience. Um, I kind of like the idea, but it's so obvious a writer's convenience that she can just pull a lucky item out of nowhere and it will solve whatever problem she has at the time. That's, yeah, that feels really lazy to me. Um, but they do try to balance it out. You know, they say once she uses it, she only has a few minutes before she turns back into Ladybug. There's a lot of heavy exposition in this first episode. Like, there's a as-you-know moment there, like when they explain her lucky powers. Um, she also, they, they, they have these two little Jiminy Crickets. Hers is a Ladybug, and Cat Noir's is a, a little mini cat. Um, and apparently once... Ladybug uses her lucky power. She has to feed the, the little Ladybug sidekick that she has. And that felt to me a lot like Digimon. Um, 
I can see that. I think they could have taken it like a different route or something. But I don't know. I guess it just being timed would have been too easy. But it being food, it, it needing food is just as easy. Um, so overall, I would have to say that it's it feels a lot Sailor Moon esque, like a modern day Sailor Moon. You know, you've got the teenage. The teenagers uh, transforming using their animal sidekicks who tell them about their powers and um, and the villains are very I will get you next time kind of villains. Um, I'm not I can say from this first episode I'm not it's not making the best impression on me first time around. Sailor Moon was fine when I was a kid. Nowadays I expect a bit more. And like I said, this feels like a modern sailor, like a modern day sailor moon. Like it feels like they're going to be reusing certain animations. Um, I do, I did like this one particular face the ladybug girl made. Um, whenever she was shocked, like she would just make this really distinguishable shocked face. Um, the cat noir kid, when he's not a, a hero, he is boring. He is really, really boring. And, He's kind of oblivious and stupid. Like, I see what they're going for. He's supposed to be the the kind of opposite of what he is when he's a superhero. Because when he's a superhero, he's cocky. And he's incredibly likable from somebody like me who loves cocky characters. Um, but just as a regular kid, he is boring. And one thing that really, really pulled me out of the show. Because they're fighting this character called the Bubbler. And like I said, he's the Cat Noir's best friend. Um... They these two heroes, you know, it, it says in the in the description of the box, it's like, oh, she has a crush on him when they're regular, but he has a crush on her when they're superheroes. So these two heroes clearly spend a lot of time fighting with each other, right? And uh, my eyes are being drawn towards. There's a lamp over there. My eyes are being drawn towards it. Uh, but these two heroes clearly spend a lot of time with each other, right? So I'm thinking to myself. If these two spend a lot of time with each other, how do they not know who each other is? Because they don't know each other's secret identities in the show. And I'm just, that's just weird me out. Like, how do they not know who each other is? And it kind of reminds me of Static Shock, because they did that in Static Shock, too, where Virgil, all he did was wear a mask <laughs> and change his clothes. Like, he didn't change his voice and he didn't change his hair. Like, Ladybug could have at least changed her hair. And I remember watching Static Shock with my dad, where Static, Static was talking to his dad. And my dad looked at me and said, if all you did was change your clothes and wear a mask, I would know who you are. Like, these two superheroes spend a lot of time with each other. How do they not know who each other is when uh, they're not in their superhero clothes? But I was willing to forgive it until the bubbler showed up. Because the bubbler showed up, and I was like, oh, Cat Noir is not going to know who he is. That's funny. And Cat Noir immediately recognized him. I'm calling him Cat Noir. I hope that's his name. Cat Noir immediately recognized him. Like, he's like, well, that's my best friend. He's been transformed into a villain. And if you look at this dude, he looks nothing like himself. He looks absolutely different from what he looked like before. So I'm like, wait, how can you recognize him but not Ladybug. Like, this doesn't make any sense. And how can she not recognize you? Like, they could change Ladybug's hair. They could change his hair. Like, I don't know why they didn't do that. That really took me out. It, it just did not make sense that they did not recognize each other. Uh, just because the masks. I mean, I've often said that attitude when it comes to superheroes, that's a big, important thing. Like, you don't suspect Superman is Clark Kent because Clark Kent acts so differently there are other reasons why too but you have to read comics to understand those um but yeah that really took me out and oh i wonder who the villain's gonna be it <laughs> this evil mastermind villain comes up and he's like yeah i'm the villain i'm like okay you know this is pretty campy but whatever and then he makes the bubbler and what happens in my mind is i'm thinking to myself okay this is what happens when i watch anything. I think to myself, okay, if they want to do this well, this is the route they should take. Um, it's one of the reasons why I like Big Hero 6, because even though I saw everything coming, I said, if this is this is the route they should take if they want to do it well, and that's the exact route they took. Um, with this show, I, I said, if they want to do this well, the bubbler will capture Cat Noir's father, 
and Cat Noir will say, hey, even though he's my dad, we still love each other, blah, 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 because it was the dad that made the bubbler go crazy. And when the bubbler came on the scene, the dad was never there. He wasn't there at all. And it hit me. I'm like, oh, there's this evil masked dude, and his dad is nowhere to be found. Hmm, I wonder who the bad guy's going to be. And it's, it's, if it's not him, if, if his, Cat Noir's dad winds up not being the bad guy, I'm going to be heavily shocked. <laughs> because they made that so obvious, but maybe they could be pulling a Catch-22 on me. Um, there's also this mean girl. I think they could do more with her. Like, maybe this is just because it's the introduction show. I usually give a show three episodes to get into the meat of everything. Uh, this mean girl, I feel like they could really make her a good mean girl if they wanted to, but she feels very stereotypical. Um, uh, yeah. So, I'm thinking, like, by the end of the by the end, like my favorite episode, my favorite character is either going to be Cat Noir because of how cocky he is, or that just tiny ladybug thing, just because of how adorable it is. But yeah, overall, I'm not really feeling the show so much. Maybe it's just because it's the first episode. I hear it gets really good as the season goes on, like as season one goes on. I don't even know if there's even more seasons. Like I only saw season one, so uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. So, even if it turns out I don't like this show and it's ultimately not for me, I plan on reviewing all of season one before I stop. So, I am I think that's about it. That's all my thoughts for the first episode of... What, what it was? Miraculous. <laughs> uh, miraculous. And uh, I will see you guys next time for episode two. This has been Shady Direct. So long. Farewell. I'd be to say goodbye.